we're now going to talk about extraocular muscles. And so to talk about extraocular muscles, we first have to discuss the axes of the eyeball and three movements, horizontal movement, vertical movement, and pivotal movement. First, horizontal movement, meaning the eyes can move across the uh, uh, back and forth along the horizon in an abduction and adduction rotation. Focus on the right eye. The right eye is abducted and then it's adducted. Abducted, it's away from the midline or the nose. Adducted, it's the eyes now towards the nose. Next, we've got the vertical movement going up and down in a vertical plane, so elevation and depression. Looking up, the eyeball can look up or elevation in the y axis, or down, depressed in the y axis. Up, down, or elevation, depression. And then finally, a pivotal movement or an torsion and extortion. This is an interesting one because this is one where the eye rotates along itself. So if I just add these cross beams there, you can see now this eye as it rotates uh, through a plane through the crosshairs right into your, and out of your screen. An example of this is when you rotate your head. When your head rotates one direction, your eyes torque in the opposite direction. And so if you see your head tilting towards its left, the, both the eyes rotate or pivot towards the right. This helps keep binocular vision. So now that we've got those movements, let's look at the extraocular muscles and their innervation. So on the left-hand column, we have the abbreviations for superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, lateral rectus, or four straight muscles. And our inferior oblique and superior oblique are two muscles that attach to the eyeball at an angle. And and can, uh, along with that, at the bottom of the screen, you see a superior view of the right orbit and an anterior view of the right orbit. We'll go back and forth between these two views. Let's go to the lateral rectus first. This is a superior view of the right orbit. Medial and lateral have been indicated. The dotted line represents the axis of the gaze of the eyeball. And so when this lateral muscle contracts, it will abduct the eye in that horizontal plane, as in looking laterally. That seems to make sense, as in that movement. It abducts the eye. The medial rectus muscle is going to then be the antagonist, and it will adduct the eye in that horizontal plane or cause the eye to look towards the nose, as in that movement, adducts the eye. So the medial rectus and the lateral rectus muscle indicated here showing their movement. The medial rectus and lateral rectus are the only two extraocular muscles that act in that ax axis. That'll become important. So there's our anatomical axis. That's going to become important when you clinically test later on. Here's a superior view of that right orbit. That red dotted line represents the axis of the gaze. The blue line represents the axis of the actual um, extraocular muscles themselves. And so looking at this, that red dotted line and the blue dotted line, the axis of the eyeball and the axis of the orbit, are off by 23 degrees. This is going to be important in understanding the actions of these other muscles. So the axis of the eyeball, red line, the axis of the orbit, blue line, are not the same. As a result, this affects the movements the extraocular muscles have on the eyeball acting in the y-axis when looking up or down. Using the bottom two figures as reference, identify the arrows in the picture to the right that best represents the anatomical action of eye muscles that elevate the eye to look up. Okay, so there's our two pictures that we're going to be showing. All right, so there's our axis of uh, the eyeball and there's the axis of the orbit. So when that superior rectus muscle contracts, it's actually going to cause the eye to look up and in and the inferior oblique to cause the eye to look up and out. How's that going to function? So remember, this is not the correct view of how we look at the top of our orbit. That is, that gaze, the gaze of the, uh, or the contraction of the superior rectus is not parallel with the eyeball. Not correct? Correct. So a superior view of the right orbit, showing our superior rectus muscle, and the contraction or the vector of that superior rectus pull. So when this muscle contracts, it causes the eye to look up and in because we're that 23 degrees off, like that, up and in. Whereas our inferior oblique in this picture, you can see this more solid part of the inferior oblique is darker 
then its insertion on the bottom of the eyeball, which we have the outline dotted and it's pink to show we're looking through the top of the eyeball to the bottom of the orbit. And so when this muscle contracts, because of its oblique orientation, it causes the eye to look up and out. Therefore, the action of the inferior oblique is up and out. Here is now the inferior oblique and superior rectus muscles action on the eye. Using the bottom two figures as reference, identify the arrows in the picture that best represents the anatomical action of eye muscles that depress the eye or to look down in that axis. All right, so there's our inferior rectus and our superior oblique. This is a superior view of the right orbit. The superior oblique is seen coursing through that blue or that gray uh, pulley called the trochlea and as the superior oblique attaches to the very top and back of the eyeball. When the superior oblique muscle contracts, it causes the eye to look down and out in that fashion. The cornea is seen as a dotted line as if we're looking at the bottom of where it's located in the bottom of the eye. Superior oblique muscle looks down and out like that. Our inferior rectus muscle is on the bottom of the eye off by those by the uh, by those 23 degrees and there when this muscle contracts it causes the eye to look down and in in that fashion there's the action of that inferior rectus muscle so now the inferior rectus and the superior oblique are added to this picture so the anatomical actions are now indicated in this anterior view of the right eye this last slide shows the anatomical actions on the left of your screen but then this clinical testing of the muscles on the right side of your screen in a different pattern and at the bottom the LR6 SO4R3 talks about the innervation of these eye muscles. This one picture can summarize everything you need to know about eye muscles and cranial nerves. Um, and so now we're going to take a look at the next tutorial to discuss the clinical testing of eye muscles.